Um, once again, my name is Marley Keisha Maza. I will be your host this morning. This is the second episode of the Career Essential series. Today, we're going to be talking about the creative industry, how you can move from passion into problem solving. So the career side of a business and all of that. Um, so we will be hearing from my incredible panelists today. Those of you that are just joining us, you are most welcome. Just kindly share with us in the chat. My pronunciation of, of your name is so casual. <laughs> I'm sorry, how am I supposed to pronounce it with all the R's now? Anyway, you are welcome. Thank you for joining us this morning. Um, we're happy to have you. We are going to begin shortly. For those of you that have just joined us, you are most welcome. Just share with us in the chat what you do. Are you a creative? What area of the creative industry are you a part of? Are you a host, a poet, a writer, a filmmaker, a model, a dancer? A... Ah, wow, there are so many things, but just share with us what you do. Let's interact a little and network. I guess we shall use the chat section for networking. Also, the questions will come to the chat section, but let's just you know, imagine that this is the networking corner of the <laughs> event. Um, all right, so I don't know if someone, the representative from Bakash Media is here, Isaac. Let me just check and confirm. I would like to ask him to begin. He'll take us through a, a bit about this series, the point behind this series. And then when he's through, I will introduce our panelists and we'll be ready to begin. Isaac is here. Yeah, all, all right, right. so uh, I'm going to hand you and you can take over first and then we'll get into the panelists next. All right, Mali, can you hear me well? Yes, I can. All right, uh, good morning to you all and welcome to our second episode of the Career Essential Series. My name is Isaac. My name is Isaac Wakashava, team leader, founder of Bakash Media Foundation. I'm glad uh, to have you all here. To our panelists, thank you so much. I know I bothered each one of you differently so much. I called Natasha endlessly, the same as Lukman and then Salvador, but I'm glad that you showed positively. Not everyone does that. I had many, many people that we invited, but they didn't. wasn't, but I'm glad that you turned up positively. Bakash Media Foundation is uh, an educational platform that does career guidance and mentorship of youth, mostly in the high institutions of learning. We've been doing this through um, organizing career sessions, seminars, and conferences, what we call and engage resources. personalities from the different who come and discuss and share their stories, share their experience, tell us their career approaches, the dynamics in their careers, to really enlighten us about how the career field is. So we've been doing this through, uh, we've been doing this for two years now, but since COVID hit, we introduced a concept. We introduced, uh, we conceptualized this to run a career essential series where we can engage our audience virtually to discuss with them, to engage them, to see how the lockdown is faring, to see what they can do. So we launched this last week, those of you who are here. And this is our second episode, and it's a powerful one. We are going to engage with the creative industry. We understand that the creative industry is mostly dominated by youth. So that's why we came up with this, and we're glad that we had the best selection of the panelists. These people are experienced there. They have seen it all. We look up to them, and we hope to have the best of them. So. We have little time and I think we're gonna start from now. On behalf of my team, I'm glad to host you today. And Mali, I think you can take it on from here. All right, thank you very much, Isaac. And thank you for organizing these um, talks and putting these things together. Thank you so, so, so much for joining us, everyone. We're happy you could join us this morning. All right, so let's get into our panelists. What I'm going to do is give a brief introduction of our panelists, and then I will hand over to the panelists to then introduce themselves um, in the way that they would prefer to introduce themselves and to tell us a little bit about themselves, and then we shall be ready to begin. So on today's panel, we have Miss Natasha. She is a model. She's um, an actress, and she has also participated before in Miss Uganda, I recently found out. And she... 
is quite popular on TikTok as well. I will ask her to introduce herself when I'm done introducing all the panelists. I think we're just going the same order of how I'm introducing everyone else. So she's an actor, she's a singer, actually, she's a dancer and she is a model. So she's quite the creative and she'll ex she will introduce herself a little bit more when we are through. Then we have Salvador, he is an actor as well. He's an MC, Master of Ceremonies. He's also an award-winning comedian and he is a radio presenter currently with Sanyum FM. Then we have Mr. Lukman Ali. He is a director, he's a writer, and he's an executive producer, all for film. And he has he's popularly, more popularly known for two of his really, really big films, The Girl in the Yellow Jumper and The Blind Dates. But he has quite a number of films, some in the work, some that have come out already. He actually did a film recently with Natasha Sinayogi as well. So we have quite a heavy panel with us today. So we're delighted that you could all join us this morning. So I'd like to ask that you could, um, that you go ahead and introduce yourselves, maybe in that same order. So we'll have Natasha and then Salvador and then Lukma. Yeah. Hi, can you guys hear me? Natasha, are you there? Can you people hear me? Can you I hear me now? Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, yeah, now we oh can hear you. Oh my God, it's, <laughs> it's, I'm sorry. Okay, I can introduce myself again. My name is Natasha Snevier. I'm an actress. I am a model. Uh, I am a dancer, a singer. Basically, I have done it all in the entertainment industry and I I'm very glad to be here today. I hope whatever I share or whatever I just put out there can help someone or it's very product productive for someone. And I'm glad I'm on this panel with these guys, uh, the Lukman and Salvador, I am so glad. <laughs> All right, thank you, Natasha. Um, You're so to you. Oh. Mm. Is he there? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay. We want to see your face, Salvador. You can see. <laughs> wow, is it my network? I heard a voice and then it faded. He is probably acting like he has frozen. <laughs> 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 oh wow. Would you like to go for the command and then Salvador can come next? Uh, yeah, well, my, my name is Lukman Ali and I'm a filmmaker. Uh yeah, that's pretty much it. Wow, so simple. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> wow. All right, man from Ombokolo, over to you. It is your turn. <laughs> The time has come back. Rukman's was like three seconds, so your time is upon us again. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> mm, okay. Should we go ahead? Is it the network? Yeah, it says he's left the chat. I think his network. Yeah. Um, all right. So I guess we can get into it and then he'll sort of join us. At least I've introduced him a bit in as much as I know. Um, so you know that he's in the creative industry, has been for a while. So he's fit to be on this panel about the creative industry in general. Um, so I'd like to begin by asking our panelists, Ms. Natasha and uh, Lukman, what could you take us through the beginning for you, the creative industry? Did you? Have you always been a part of the creative industry or did you start off doing something else and then sort of gear into you know, the creative industry? Because I know that many times, especially for creatives, I've heard so many stories where maybe you study one thing and then somehow venture into something else and move into the creative industry. And then there are also those who from the get-go, they knew that this is the thing I want to do and pursued it right from the beginning. 
So just, I'd like to hear your beginning stories. What, how did you get into the creative industry and did you start right away? Um, I, I will say this. I uh, usually at the time I started, I guess uh, some years back, uh, there wasn't, uh, your focus was in the entertainment industry. You wouldn't say that uh, I'm coming out of school and the first thing I'm going to do is go into, I'm going to go into acting, I'm going to go into music because it wasn't one of the things that you would say you get money from or you would be something with it. So I first did IT and I did uh, business management. So when I did that and I was done with Miss Uganda, and I realized, okay, so this is something I'm passionate about. I don't think, I looked at everything that was in front of me and everything that I could do at that time. And I, I, I really wasn't that interested with everything else apart from going into that direction, the entertainment world and the creative side. So I just decided to pick it up. It wasn't easy then because, oh, we didn't have all the, the stuff that is there now. So I would say it was something I did first, then I went into that direction. Yeah, that was my experience. You're mute, we can't hear you, you've mute. Oops, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> um, thank you, Natasha. Salvador is back, you are yeah. welcome, Salvador. <laughs> we are, we sort yeah, of kicked off you. our conversation. Yeah, so we've kicked off our conversation. Lukman is going to share and then you share after Lukman. We are just going into the question I've asked is, how did you get into the creative industry? Is it something that you launched into right away or did you start off doing something else gearing towards the, into the creative industry with the time? So we're going to hear from Lukman and then you could go next. All right, Lukman. Yeah, hi, uh, so I, um... I guess for me, I was more like forced into other things like school at the beginning. I was uh, knew that I wanted to be in uh, the movie industry. I, I don't, I, at, the po at that time when I was like eight, I didn't really know what that meant. I, I thought that maybe I was going to be an actor mm. or something like that. But then I quickly realized that I wasn't, uh, I wasn't a talented actor. So I had to figure out another, a different way of doing it. And uh, so throughout school, I was just, I was at school as an it's excuse, to be honest. Fast. I was, uh, <laughs> I was, uh, I was in school uh, simply because I guess it's illegal not to be in school when you're that, uh, <laughs> at that age. So I had, I had an option, but to be in school. But um, mm -hmm. I, I remember always i always ask my dad at what point can i uh drop out like when is it okay like can i drop out now i'm seven and it's like ah it's too early uh now i'm in form now i'm in form four do you think i can maybe drop out now my dad is like well if you drop out now maybe it's still too early so uh when i go to form six i asked him and he gave me probably the best piece of advice i've ever uh, gotten he told me you go to the university you don't have to pay uh, because it's not like high school. You can go to the classes, you can uh, enter the, the classes without having paid. So go to all these universities and check out what these people are learning. Uh, so uh, what I did is I went to three different universities and I went to the last years of those courses, which was, I was going to do IT and industrial arts. So I'd go to these different universities and instead of going to my year, I'd go to the last year. And the point of it was to see what the students were doing. Wow. And uh, what my dad said that if, if you see, if what they're doing is something you, that you can learn by yourself, then you don't have to study. So uh, checking out this, uh, these students, what they were learning, I figured I could learn this from YouTube by myself in half the time for a fraction of the money. So I kind of just, uh, uh, I don't know what the... <laughs> The, what, what, the romantic way of saying it, I just grabbed my coat and my, my hat and I whoop, got my cup bag and left. <laughs> yeah, so that's it. That was it for me. I just went into the creative industry at that point. And I guess that's why a lot of people have, have been hearing my name for a long time. And when they meet me, they expect me to be a very old person, but I just had a quick start. I started way earlier than 
most people. So yeah, that's mm-hmm. how I ended up in the creative industry. Yeah. Yeah. Oh wow, interesting. University of YouTube. Oh yeah. All right, yeah. Salvador, over to you. Um. Uh, how, how, how do I start? Uh, I went to school. Definitely, uh, university, Materi University, Faculty of Technology. I did telecommunications engineering, 2004-2008 class. And um, my whole life I had been this cheeky, stubborn guy. You know, I would make people laugh. I didn't know that you could earn from it until I met Theatre Factory. Theatre Factory, before it became Fun Factory and all that stuff. So I got intrigued watching those guys making people laugh. And yet this is something I did easily. But my dream was to become an engineer, which I pursued. And uh, in 2008, I became one, uh, joined uh, MTN. I worked there for, for about five years. Yeah, from 2007, I was still in school, actually, in 2007, when I joined as a temp staff. And then when I finished in 2008, I was made permanent. But uh, in 2009, there was a competition that was uh, advertised in the newspapers, looking for the funniest guy in Uganda. So I applied and uh, yeah, the competition went well because uh, I came up, uh, came out with number two. Of course, uh, a Westerner had to win. You guys are winning everything. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're in charge of everything, even competitions. Anyway, I don't want to to go into that trauma because I was traumatized uh, for about five years. I had to see a therapist. So just know uh, I am, I'm just recovering. Anyway, <laughs> let's talk bad news. Let's share some good news. Um, after the competition, I was working at the same time doing comedy. We started the show at a place called Defenders in Centenary Park. I think now it's called, it used to, why it's called Waikiki, why it's called something uh, before it changed its name. And we, I would work and at the same time, you know, do the shows. And uh, my passion for engineering started to die because uh, we were doing the same thing over and over again, you know, routine work. You come, you fill in a form, you check the the, the, the uh, base stations, you check the alarms, you clear alarms, you troubleshoot, you do things. So it was repeated work. And I, yet comedy on this other side was challenging. You had to get new jokes every time you stood on stage. And those, those are the challenges I really, really wanted. So slowly by slowly, I, I grew into the comedy life, and um, this other side was also fading. The engineering side was fading, and so in 2011, I, I decided to throw in the towel. I resigned from my job to concentrate on comedy, and uh, here we are today. So yeah, it was a transition of uh, a comedian to, I mean, a, an engineer to a comedian. So that's that's basically it in a nutshell. Wow! Thank you so much. So it seems Lukman is the only one who jumped right in. The rest had to sort of do something. Yeah, the rest are not that intelligent. Really not first, that intelligent which is very so. interesting. <laughs> Bella. Uh, 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 no. I, I wouldn't say intelligent. I would say more like I, 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 I just had no yeah. love for school. For school, well, they, you, school you, you, failed, you, you failed tests and exams. Let's not sugarcoat things. Boy, I was the YouTube <laughs> word. You failed uh, exams, and then you uh, tried Salvador, other things. Let's continue. Salvador, I, I, my partner, I think, let's continue. I think to fail, you need to have you need to have done the test. I I dodged most of these tests, so I I did technically I didn't fail because I never attended the tests anyways. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Fair point. <laughs> All right. I would like us to get into a quick commercial break because there's something I was supposed to do before I went into the questions. We have a quick poll from Bakash Media. They are going to it's just going to pop up on your screen shortly. We'd just like to know how you heard about these sessions. Um to know a little bit more about. You know, ab- Wow, English. To get to know a little bit about you, we want to understand the clear demographic of who we're dealing with so we can be able to serve you better in the coming episodes, in the coming weeks. So question one is, what is your level of education? Primary, high school, tertiary, other. If it's none of those, you can just click other. It's all right, no pressure. 
Um, yeah, I think I should be doing this as well as we go through. So after you finish the first one, then you will take it to the next. Um, and then you just tell us which career sector you are in. If none of these apply, then you just say other. I can see they have like three or four, really. There are five. <laughs> um, and these days there are so many sectors and careers and all sorts of things. So just click the next one. Um, then you go to number three, which is, have you been to a career guidance event or fair before? So something like this, whether virtually or physically, have you attended something um, like this before? If you attended something, but you are not sure, they sort of talked about career, but then also maybe it was supposed to be about something else, you know, maybe you're not sure. So you can just click that. Did you attend last week's session? So this is the second episode in the series. We had one last week um, with Mr. Arne Purjendo and Maggie Ch Dr. Maggie Chikozi and, um, oh, I've forgotten the third person, wow someone really dope i've forgotten guys anyway but we had a session last week so if you attended it just say yes and then if you didn't just say no and then we'd like to know how you got to know about us was it any of the social media platforms was it through one of the panelists just let us know so we are aware how you came to know about us i think we should be done now i was sort of also doing it at the same time so i think we're through um humphrey navimanya yes was the third person thank you ronald yeah, Ronald has been attending. Thank you so much, Ronald. Um, so that was the third person. Um, thank you very much. Is everyone done? If I could get just a few hands up to know that we have a few people done. I don't want to move forward before um, at least a few people have completed. So I'm just opening this up. I can see the participants. Yeah, thumbs up is good. Hand up is good. Ah, okay, a few hands are up. Thank you very much. Um, Ambrose, Justine, Jasper. Okay, we have a few people that have completed, so I think we can get into it. Um, so, wow, so we've heard the beginning, <laughs> which has been very interesting. You've all had different paths and different entryways into the careers that you're in now. So I want to know what made you, for each of you, what made you decide, actually, before we get to what made you decide to stick to it, what was it like when you ventured into these things, venturing into film, into comedy, into acting and music, into the, the creative industry, because I know that in Uganda, particularly, since that's where we are, it has grown quite a bit and it's doing really, really well, I think, over the past few years. But many of you joined before, I think it's been more than two, three years when since, you know, before the creative industry really started booming. So what was your experience like when you initially entered in terms of making money? Was it easy? Is it something that came quick and easy? you know, maybe support from family members or from the community and how people looked at you? Like, what was your initial experience? Like once you made the decision and said, okay, now I've decided to do comedy. I've decided to do film. I've decided to, to do modeling. What was your initial first experience? What was it like? Both the good side and the bad side. Um. I will say that uh, in the beginning when I I, just, uh, I joined, this, this is so many years ago because I've been in the industry now. This year, I've been in the industry for 20 years. And uh, when we started, there was no, <laughs> look man, your face, what the hell? <laughs> I, <laughs> I started uh, when we were still doing uh, theater. There was The movie industry was not as good as it is right now. You say it's just grown a bit, but it has grown drastically. Like it is from what we had um, 10 years ago and what we have right now, I will tell you it's by far way ahead. So when we started, it was really, really hard. There was nothing like you would say that uh, we didn't have the market, first of all. That's the thing, and everybody looked down on this industry. on this industry. The creative industry was looked down upon, like it wasn't something that someone would advise you, or your family would tell you that. Hey, by the way, go and join, be, become an uh, an actor, become a model, become a comedian. Those were things that were unheard of. So it wasn't easy that there was no support from the family, uh, there was no support from the community, and. When when we joined at that time, like when I was done with Miss Sudan and then I joined Obsessions and we started doing theater work, uh, 
in courts, and I'm using courts because that's what everybody would would think and they would say, oh, girls who would do something like that, they're selling themselves. They are not morally right. Basically, we suffered backlash left, right, center, because no one ever thought, like they didn't look at it. There was this word that I didn't even understand at the time they were using it, the, the word omudongo. I didn't know what it meant. You understand? And we were all categorized as eh, omudongo. Like the people you, you are known as the omudongo. And you're like, what is that? Is it? Am I, am I am I a leper? What what is the problem? But it was something. It wasn't easy. It was really not easy, and it was very discouraging. That if you really were not passionate about the industry at that time, it wasn't something you were going to push through. So many people dropped out. So many people took other direction. Like so many people went into other things. Uh, they decided to okay. If you went to university and you did something. People are like, you know what? I would rather go and do this business that I learned for than do something. Uh, they're going to abuse me for, they're not going to support me. So it wasn't easy. Uh, and I, I, would, I would say on my part, I have grown with the industry. I have seen the ups and downs I know. And I think it has made it much easier for me to know how to maneuver it now because I have learned through the job. Yeah, make sure that was my... Uh, awesome. Uh, wow, that was very interesting quite a while ago. So the, I mean, the film industry has grown a lot. A lot. <laughs> uh, a lot. I have, I'll get a lot. Huh? All right. I guess it's better to hear it from someone who's been in it for all this time, because I guess my perception of it is for maybe I've also been following it closely for about maybe seven, eight years. So yeah. my my understanding of this is limited perspective. Um, all right, can we hear from Lukman or Salvador? Are you there? <laughs> I feel like your experience might be different from hey. Natasha's and Salvador's, but sure. <laughs> let's sure. hear what your experience is like. <laughs> when, I, when, I joined, when I joined the comedy industry, there was no industry as such. It was more of a trial and error. Yeah, we had, uh, there was no mm. professionalism. It was about, you know, let's try this thing. If it works, uh, I was fortunate to be part <laughs> of the team which, which uh, was was professionally trained because we had mentors all day from South Africa. They told us how to commercialize the business, how to commercialize the art, how to, they taught us so many things. So we actually, our lot, uh, by, by my lot, I mean the likes of uh, Muhanji, Daniel Omara, Emmanuel Seba, GJ, uh, that lot there that came from the competition kind of shaped how the, the comedy industry was to be because there used to be only sketch comedy and uh, the only stand-up comedian by that time was Pablo. So, and, and for him to carry the, the, the flag mm -hmm. of stand-up comedy for about six years before we joined was something incredible, incredible because this guy did it by himself. Uh, he had nobody else to do stand-up, yeah? So what happened was when we came in, there was the Amarula family, there was, theater factory which broke up and then uh, in, and formed also fan factory. So when we came with uh, of, of one man, one stage, it changed. So I'm proud to say I, I, I've been part of, uh, of, uh, of the comedy industry. Now when you look at the movie industry, it's very, like even, even Natasha has, has over stretched the 10 years me, I can be very honest with you. Two years in. <laughs> no. <laughs> eh, when they call you to go out, <laughs> blue and red, there was no uh, casting manager. They would be like, for oh, yourself. So it was more of a... But to look at the movie industry, the film industry today, with, uh, with the likes of Lukman, uh, they are directing amazing, amazing movies. 
you sit mm-hmm. back and you're like, wow, okay, maybe these guys have been pretending to be struggling. Kumbe, they have been having something big. But for us, it, 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 it has been one step at a time. For movie, mm-hmm. it was like, eh, 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 then, wow, we are here. Like they've been hiding, like, you know, surprise. We are here. Oh. <laughs> that, that is how like the movie industry has been because a couple of years ago, we didn't have, yes, we had film festivals, we had awards and everything. But if you look at the awards they were giving, the movies they were giving awards to you, be like, eh. I attended the film festival, the film awards. I think they were at, uh, right here near Moves, that place. And I was, I was getting goosebumps because the, uh, the movies that were nominated, they were, yo, they were amazing. And you were like, eh, how come this guy is, like, it was mind blowing, something which we didn't have just a couple of years ago. So that, that shows you that uh, the creative industry in Uganda is really, really amazing if the investments are there. Comedy has been lucky that we have sprung so fast because the money has also been there. So the growth has been concurrent with the money because if there's no investment, you can't do anything. Producing a movie is very, 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 mm. very expensive as compared to Salvador, come and do a mm. show. You give me 500K, I will perform for you for two hours and I go. They made money made i go but a movie you write a script from the script you have to cut the characters yeah. casting the characters you have to hire equipment hiring equipment you have to get location getting locations now you have to start shooting getting clearances do it. so many things are involved so i must say uh, the creative industry uh is going to be spearheaded that one i'll tell you for a fact in the next two three four five years the movie industry the film industry is going to spearhead all of us so there will be film, mm. then comedy, then music will be down there. Right? You're planning to <laughs> sing, forget it. Your industry is going to struggle in the near future. <laughs> but uh, the, uh, the creative industry in Uganda is just at its uh, 0.1% potential. And uh, I am glad to be part of it. And I pray that uh, it is, the bubble bursts when I am still, I am still in it. So yeah, basically that has been the journey. Comedy has not had a rough journey. It's been smooth. You set your own mm. standards. But movie, mm-hmm. there's been a lot of uh, uh, condemning. Oh, when you do a, a, a romantic scene, ah, Abu, they must have slept together. Hey, so there was a lot of talk which discouraged the young girls from joining mm. the movie industry. There's so much talk that happens. For us comedians, when they call us Musiru, or your Musiru, we take it as a compliment, but you know, when you tarnish an actor's image, yeah, by saying they did this, they slept with this, they ran, they they hold back and they say, ah, you know what? I don't want to put myself in a position where I can showcase how good I am. So yeah, the creative mm-hmm. industry has evolved and uh, it's just getting started. Wow, awesome! It's just getting started. Let's buckle up and wait for ah, what lies ahead. We are excited. Yeah. We are watching closely, America. Um, Lukman, we'd like to hear your experience. What has it been like? It seems so far from the look of it, it seems that you have been at least the one thing that you definitely had was support um, on this journey. And so, yeah, we'd be curious to hear what your experience was like. Yeah, I've, I've had support, but that's like... Uh, uh, support from your parents in movies is the equivalent of someone's just saying go 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 it's it's nothing like movies you need support like financial support so my parents were supporting me but it's more like uh, we we support you that's it (laughs) we support you that's it uh uh but the film industry requires a lot of money so uh for me i started off in uh, an advertisement uh, doing uh, uh design uh, so uh, I I entered film as a, a passion thing that I was really really interested in uh, from a young age. So um, because of that, I had no pressure. I didn't have anyone pressuring me into doing things. Like I do whatever I want. If I want to make a short film, that's what I do. If I want to make a feature film, that's what I do. This since we don't have an industry that's already built, we don't have that pressure yet. But the money, like you need to have so much money to do any of these things. So my, let mm. I, I would say my uh, my 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 advertising work has been paying for my hobby <laughs> uh, for all these years. 
and mm. uh, my, my experience in it uh, for me i'm a firm believer that it's going to work out uh, it mm. might it might not work out with me still around i it might work out later but it has to it has to work out and when it does whoever is um, there should uh, be able to um, you know enjoy the benefits and and also the fact that uh, we are trying to push it and make it work uh, without the knowledge that it may work with us still around. I think that's a good thing for, uh, uh, for us as well. We, we, we might end up being the uh, Africa band of, uh, of movies at, at some point. <laughs> and I'm, I'm, I'm happy to be that guy. I'm happy to be that guy. Uh, uh, right now, like the, 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 the first feature film that I made uh, as a joke, I wasn't. I, I I wanted to make a movie before before I, I was thirty. So that was the reason I made that film. I made it so that I make it before I'm thirty. And now, and Which now one? it's like uh, the girl in the yellow jumper. And now, uh, okay. And now it's like with uh, with Netflix. As as much as uh, as much as they they haven't yet uh, put it out there, but it's it's such a a big milestone for me. I'm thinking, okay. At least a big, a big, a big company like that has shown interest. That's that's amazing uh, yeah. for some for something that we we just made and we're like, oh, let's just do this thing. Uh, I, I I always wanted to make a movie before I'm thirty. Now I'm approaching thirty. Let me let me quickly make a film. Uh, and then you have all these guys are like, oh, we've always wanted to make a film like this. And then they join me, and then we work as a team, and we're like, let's try to make this thing work. And and now uh, it coming up and people are like interested in having it it's quite amazing so it shows that if we get the investment we need and we we get uh, people like natasha scenario where our actors if, if all these people get the support they need and we, we we actually do this the way it's supposed to be done i mean uh it's 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 endless the potential is uh is just above and beyond what we we, we all expecting so well, I don't know if that answers the question. I feel like I always dance around the questions and hmm, maybe, who knows, maybe I did answer it somehow. It's okay, that's, <laughs> do you like to add to that? It's okay, that's, we've still got quite a bit from there. Do you, just quick question, are you still doing advertising currently or you yeah, would now uh, focus solely on film? That's, that's my main uh, job, uh, advertise, advertising. Uh, because currently no one, no one is paying for the film, and as as you can see, most of my films are on YouTube. Uh, I distribute them for free. Uh, the purpose of uh, of these short films that I'm making is to just, uh, I guess, sensitize people uh, that we can that uh, we we are not yet there, but we are trying to get there. And uh, uh, I, I figured if people see the progress that we're doing when eventually we start making movies that require subscription and paying and uh, like your HBO stuff, when we, when we get to that point, people know that they're not paying for trash. They know that we've been, we've been trying and yeah. we've, uh, we've pushed ourselves and there's a lot of work that goes into these things. So they will, uh, I, I guess what we're trying to do is just get respect for the industry in these short films. That's why I am okay with people sharing them. I'm okay with people uploading them on their own YouTubes. It's fine for me because the, 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 the point is not to make money now. The point is to have eyes on the industry. And yeah. I know once we have the eyes, the money will happen automatically. So mm. that's what it is for now. Ah, all right. Awesome. Thank you very much for that. So I want to know from you guys, what made you choose to continue pursuing well okay how what made you i don't it's like a two-part question i think it just two things going off in my mind that what made you choose to stick to this thing even in spite of all the challenges you know the fact that it's something that people don't understand much or the fact that there's not much funding you don't get much out of these things or the fact that you know people call you all sorts of names and things like that like why would you leave your work that you're doing let's say particularly i think for natasha and salvador why would you leave your job in computer science or computer engineering or whatever communication engineering and insist on doing comedy doing acting doing modeling 
with everything that's going around, like what are some of the things that made you stick it out, like stick to your decision regardless of the fact that the money maybe may not have been as regular as what it would be in a, um, in a formal job or a normal job or, you know, that kind of thing. Like what made you feel just kuguma and keep going? Okay, maybe uh, let, me, let me start with that question. For me, it was just the passion. Uh, when I look at uh, the new entrants in our business, mm. uh, unfortunately, their motivation is money. They are motivated by the wrong reasons mm. uh, to join the industries that we mm. are in right now. Before my first, uh, almost first six months of performing, doing stand-up comedy, we were paid beer. We were given a crate of beer. Our group, at the end of the performance, they give you a crate of beer and you celebrate. That was a very big achievement. Mm. Uh, because... All we wanted to do was to showcase. Yeah, we were given a crate of beer. And you know what it meant to sit in the VIP and the table is full of beer. Ah, the, the, the site alone was just beautiful. But uh, all, all, cause all we needed to do was to showcase. I left a very comfortable place mm. to go into an industry which was very uncertain. Uh, I remember almost going mm. asking back for my job after one week because... I looked at my bank account and I looked well, at how I was going to manage to pay rent. I didn't have anything. I only had 200K in my account when I resigned. Uh, I was then paying rent of 400K. I had a car that I had to fuel. I had people I was taking care of. So it was, I was going to, to, to give up after one week and, you know, swallow my pride, go back to the HR of MTN and say, I, I think I made a mistake. I, I was just... I'm I, like, sorry, I was know, joking. Yeah, give, Give me, give me some time to reconsider. But uh, that very weekend when I was thinking of going, uh, I got two gigs that paid me almost three times the salary I was getting at MTN. In two days, Friday, Saturday, I was paid three times what my job was, was paying me when I was in MTN. Then I was like, wait, you mean this is what I've been missing on? Okay, my so my passion <laughs> was driven by the fact that uh, things were going to work no matter what I had to make them work so and also the support from my parents because my dad asked me are you sure that's what you wanted to do my dad from Mbokolo that guy with the, that mentality of you have to be an engineer a lawyer doctor what the man he told me are you sure that's what you want to do I said yes mm -hmm. I give you my blessing when he did that I knew I had to make it work wow. no matter what I had to make it work so yeah. it was more of of the support system that was around and also the timing of things because for me after that one week when I was reconsidering going back to uh, employment, something happened, like <laughs> God happened. And then I got those two gigs, uh, an end of year party and, uh, mm. and a wedding. That paid me a total of three times what I was earning at the end of the month when I was at MTN. So I knew these things would work. Oh. So the motivation, the drive to perform, to pr prove yourself was there because the money followed us. Yeah, The money just came following us. And I, I think... That is what the new breed is not understanding. Uh, they are not getting the point. All they see is Salvador is driving a nice car. He's staying in a nice house. He has a beautiful woman. He's doing well. And then they say, I want to get those things. They don't know the sacrifices we have made. You know, the free shows we have had. Uh, the late nights we have been at. Uh, my first major breakthrough show was in 2011 when I hosted. Uh, I wasn't even the main host. Uh, it was even an accident that made me shine <laughs> at the Miss Uganda 2011 when power went off uh, mm -hmm. and they needed somebody to cover for the time that they were going to correct the power issue. The sound was on, but there was no lighting. Wow. And what is no light without at, at a, a beauty pageant? So I had about four, uh, 40 minutes. Uh, by the time the power went off to when it came back, they, they were, it was 40 minutes. So they told me, fill it up. We are going to jokes. Uh, See, see that the audience is, 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 is taken up. And then after that performance, that is now when uh, my life changed because uh, the audience was made up of CEOs, MDs, ministers, you know, members of parliament. And from that day, uh, after that event, people mm -hmm. were like, wow, okay, comedy is something nice. So I started getting gigs and gigs and gigs. So it was all about the sacrifices we made, mostly the passion the drive to be on stage and perform. That was our drive. The passion we had was our drive. 
not the money. The money just came in later. And that is the good thing about why uh, the same names that were there before are the same names that are happening now. And uh, it's, it's, it's so a beautiful thing that uh, all this happened. But most importantly, there was God, because the, the way things happened, God was there. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, that that is majorly what happened. Oh my God. Um. Yeah, I I I really agree with the Salvador. The only the thing that motivated me, like he said, the support was very important on my side. Uh, I would say that uh, I had a talk with my dad. First of all, they wrote about my dad in the papers and they say my dad wasn't very supportive of me. I went to Miss Uganda, he was very pissed. ABC did so many things. And and my dad was like, oh, so, so now that you've done Miss Uganda, what's your way forward? I told him what I wanted to do. I did it. It was there in front of him. But then I really wanted to go ahead and do something that I was passionate about, something that I knew that I was going to do. Well, and uh, he told me, uh, he sat me down and, uh, and told me something and it stayed with me. And I think it's one of the things that made my work easier to date is if you decide to do something in life, do it great. Don't do it half. Don't be known for the person who did it. Like uh, if, if you're going to do it, I am not going to be known as the person who did it. Like, look, man, understand. So. When he told me that, I think that's the one of the one of the things that kept me going through the time where they like Salvador said they used to give them Bianga, you you're lucky. They used to give us transport, like you stay and you're going somewhere and then they give you transport. Hey, Django, okay, transport there. And they're like, okay, so fine. Uh, it wasn't it wasn't an understood industry, and we really struggled through it. There's so many gigs that I will tell you that we did, and you got peanuts. There's so many uh I think my first payment in life was in the, when it comes to art, it was in 2000 and double, double digits. I would honestly say that like 2011, like when it comes to that, after being in the industry for that long, that's why you see when I say 10 years to now, uh, and is because that before there was just one source of entertainment. And if you were deciding to be a creative or you decided to be an actress or you deciding to be anything, the only thing your target was never, oh, I, I'm going to be great in Uganda. Your target was you're looking outside of Uganda. You're not working for the country at that point. You're working for, I want to go to Hollywood. I want to go to South Africa. You know, you're looking for places where you know you're going to shine. So it was, yeah, but, but, but it was very, it was passion that actually made us stay and decide to build the industry that is the one that we have right now, that is the Ugandan one. And, and yes, we were so dis I was so discouraged in a way that I joined another kind of business to be able to stay doing my creative, but at the same time, have the money in the pockets, yeah? So I, dis I decided to go into farming and that's how I managed to still stay an actress, but also have farming as something that brings in the money for me because the, the, the industry wasn't paying at that time. So yeah, I will, I will honestly say it's just the passion that has pushed me up to where I am right now. And uh, I continue to be that person throughout. Yeah. Wow. wow. All right. Wow. So uh, for me, uh, the question was that um, what made people leave what they were doing before? <laughs> uh, let me see, why did I leave being an astronaut? Mm. The space program in Uganda is not yet there. So uh, being an astronaut in Uganda was not going to work out for me. Uh, so uh, when I thought about that, I was like, my, my, my dream, is to be an astronaut, right? Now, we barely have a plane. So is this, is this realistic? Uh, but now everyone is watching movies. Uh, I, I kind of draw. So you know what? Maybe I can do this movie thing. But to be honest, the thing is that I don't really have any other talents. My, my talent is purely art, like from drawing to doing 3D design to doing all this. It has something to do with art. I've, um, I'm interested in music, like all the things I'm interested in uh, have to do with art. And uh, I, I don't think there's anything else that I 
could have done, I, at least I can't really, I can't really know for sure. For sure. Uh, art, art was, to be honest, my only way of expression. So I, I just had to do something in that direction, either film or music or uh, draw, drawing something along those lines. So I, I, I kind of had no options, to be honest. Yeah. And uh, that's, that's pretty much why I joined that industry. And, and, and it's, it's funny how people always look down on the creative industry. And uh, there, there are times I've, I've met people like professors and doctors and whatnot, and they ask you what you do and you tell them what you do. And they look at you like, ah, well, good on you. But then when you find out how much money they're getting and you think about how much money you can make in an hour, you're looking at them and you're like, I could probably sponsor your entire family and your clan. And <laughs> but it's like, they always look down on us, uh, but if only they knew, I guess they would just tell their kids to, to change their careers and, and move and do, do, do what we do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow, awesome. Thank you. Uh, wow, yeah, I can sponsor your whole family days anyway. <laughs> Thank you guys for sharing that. That was very, very interesting. One of the things that I've heard um, is that just keep going. Like when you decide to do something, do it. Like once you made the decision, like it means, okay, I've made the decision. This is it. Let's just keep going. But I also like that Natasha talked about diversifying, how you had to sort of go into farming because at the time you entered entertainment, things weren't going as good, but you knew that you had to stick to entertainment because it's a thing that you wanted. And so you found other things to sort of feed your um, income, your cash flow, so that you could um, keep going into something else. Lukman, I see your hand is up. Would you like to add something? I'll let you add something. Yeah, I just, I just wanted to add on, on what Natasha said about if you're doing something, you have to do it 100%. This is something that I, I have to say, she's not just saying it, this is actually true. When we were working on the film that we've just finished, uh, which was 16 rounds, we got, uh, we always have challenges on films, but for this one, it was almost a special case where it was like uh, only challenges and we would just pick out which ones are higher than the other, like which ones are worse than the one we had before. So it was incredibly difficult. And when we're doing, when we're working on projects and things get hard, people tend to quit halfway or they tend to like uh, just pull out and not deliver hundred uh, percent. But there, there are moments where in my head, I was like, she is definitely going to give up on this. This is like uh, beyond what uh, people would normally put up with. This is. You're muted, Lukman. I don't know, something just happened. Sorry, okay. You are muted. I have I've unmute. Yeah, so uh, during the process of making the film, there were times where uh, things would get extremely hard and I, I thought that she was de definitely going to uh, give up. But just like me, uh, I, I never, once I decide to do something, I know that it has to be done a hundred percent or else, because uh, no, 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 no one is going to really care what happened on the night what what went wrong people just want to see something that's really mm -hmm. done well so all these excuses you might have that oh you see i didn't have transport that day there was no electricity this was not working no one cares you, you can't explain to the entire cinema afterwards you can't explain to everyone that watches the video on youtube why, why things are not working out so i, I really have to uh, commend her on that the fact that even though things were going wrong, she, she, she just stayed and did exactly what she said, that she would do it uh, 100%. Uh, and, 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 and what I'm telling you now, we were working like uh, from morning to like five in the morning again. Uh, and sometimes there's no lunch because everyone is busy and we don't have anyone to send for it. And we're in lockdown. So it's, it's, it, it was crazy. So I, I just had to come out and point out that when she says that, She's not just saying it, it, it is actually true. Leaves it out. Okay. Yeah. Mm. All right. So what, am I unmuted? Yeah. All right. Thank you for sharing that. What I would like to know is for 
someone who's out there who is maybe planning to make that jump, they are currently doing something very different that's not necessarily high school fresh out of university and they know what they want to do and the things like basically something that you can tell them. I'd like to know what I would say maybe what are some of the mistakes that they can avoid as they get into as they make the switch or just get themselves into the creative industry maybe a mistake that you have made before that others can learn from or something you almost a mistake you almost made or something that you just know in your heart is not a good idea for someone to do just mistakes one can avoid as you are making that crossover into the career industry from wherever you are currently in life that's not the creative industry I don't know if my question was clear. It was, okay. it was, it was going on and off, but I, 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 at least I picked out what you were saying. Um, I will say this, you see, the, the thing about everything that you're going to do, just keep in mind that there's always, there, there's always going to be, there are two sides to everything. There's not, it's not going to be a clear road. Nothing is just going to be a bed of roses. There's always, a, it's always two-sided. The issue is, is to always know what is your re what's the reason why you've decided to make the switch. Why do you want to do it? Why do you, why are you going into this other, whatever the switch you've made? And if you're coming into the creative mm -hmm. industry, I will say this, and and this is something people find very hard talking about. And I'll speak for myself as a as a as a lady. Uh, you're going to find. Um, people who want to take advantage, right? Who want to take advantage of you being a woman and to be able to give you roles or to be able to give you, to be able to lure you, like to pull you in, right? The thing is you have, mm -hmm. once you make the first mistake, you know it's going to be a mistake that's going to follow you throughout your career because people speak. Someone will go and say, yeah, if you want to give that girl a role, the only way you can get a role is if she, if you tell her you want, this and she will say yes to that. Yes. So you have to be very something's happening. principled when you're entering the industry. Well, something just happened. Are you still yeah. there? Are we, yeah. Are we, are we, are we back? Yeah, I'm back. Are we, are yeah. we back? Are we good? Yes, you're back. Yeah, yeah. So I was saying, if, oh, sorry. So I was saying that it's just to always be very principled when you decide to do something you have to enter with a very clear head because it's unfortunate it's very unfortunate that our industry is the kind of industry where people are, take advantage of people but you just have to know what you want to do and at the same time you have to enter this industry and understand that it's very it's a it's a young industry you have to come into it knowing that you're going to help it grow you're not coming to become a staff you're not coming to take over from everybody you're on there. You're coming to help grow the industry. So you have to always know you're going to learn. You're coming to learn. You're coming to do better. You're coming to, you, you're, you're learning from Natasha. You're learning from Lukman. You're learning from Salvador. Everybody has their strength. So it's, it's very good to always, if you want to be a Lukman or you want to be a Salvador, the best thing to know is when you're coming into this, just make sure... You have to make mistakes though. You, you, that's the thing you have to understand. The only way you'll know how to maneuver your way through the industry is there's small mistakes that will come through. Big ones you can avoid because they, they show themselves. They're in your face when they're coming through. So you can mm -hmm. avoid that. But to be, you have to, to sacrifice. You have to know you're going to work odd hours. You, you know you're going to spend less time with your families. You're going to spend, there's so many things that you have to keep in mind when you're coming from a five, uh, from a nine to five to come into this mm -hmm. creative. Industry. 
yeah so it, it requires so much of you because you are the create you know you are the creative so indeed it, it it requires so much of you than when you're working a nine to five you understand yeah so mm -hmm. you just have to keep in mind all those things yeah. all right thank you salvador or lukeman okay uh, for someone. me i think uh uh, the biggest mistake so many people, especially new entrants, make is uh, the lack of self-belief, which will lead you to desperacy. So you will do whatever mm -hmm. is there to prove yourself. Yeah, mm -hmm. That's where they take advantage of people because you're desperate. You want to become like Natasha in the movie industry. You want to mm -hmm. become like Salvador in the comedy industry. So you are very desperate. You start doing every every job, left, right, and center, because you want to be, you know, you're, you're, you're just desperate to prove to others. You see, the number one killer of self-belief is society. If you let society dictate what you can or can't do, you are bound to fail. That one, I, I'll tell it to you, point blank. Unfortunately, most of the things we do, we do it for people. Bananda, bananda, yeah. Most of the things we do is, is not for us, yeah? I've seen Natasha on TV, and I'm like, ah, ah. I think I can do better. Hmm? What do you think, you guys? BT? So we don't do things for ourselves. That's why when we start, we are very, very passionate. Then later we realize there's too much work, too much work involved. There's too much time you spend. And then you are like, eh, I didn't know these things were this much. And then you start now doubting yourself. And before you doubt yourself, if, uh, as that happens, you also your self-belief dies out. And then you say, this one was not meant for me. But uh, one thing we need to, to avoid is let society dictate. Once you fall, it's not how many times you fall, but that one time you stand up and you say, you know what? I've fallen six times because I made A, B, C, D, E mistakes. Let me try it this other way. And then maybe when you try it on the seventh time, you are going to uh, reach the sky. So I believe in self-motivation. I am my biggest fan. I tell myself I can do it. And then whatever society does or says is either a, it's a compliment. It is just to top up on what I already know about myself. Over self-confidence is also bad, yeah, because you should be open to learning from the big people. But unfortunately, we join the industry wanting to compete or be better than, you can never be better than Natasha because there's only one Natasha. You can try to do what Natasha does, but you can never be better than Natasha. It is what society uh, says that this is the, that's why I don't give myself titles. These things are, I'm the best comedian. I'm the king of comedy. That is putting yourself on pressure for nothing. Yeah. Because there's always somebody who's going to come who is better than, than you at that very moment. Yeah. But that doesn't mean you are not good. So believe in yourself and let what society thinks about you just be a complement of what you already know. Let it not be a determinant of how you're going to make your decision. Because people are very quick to lift you up and then they will just leave you. If you have no plan, if, if you have no ladder, they will just leave you and you land badly. So if you have no self-belief in yourself, first of all, as a person, trust me, uh, you are going to knock. So yeah. Don't be desperate to prove to anybody. Yeah. You can achieve it. That is it. What level? So let us not be so quick to prove ourselves to people that are the bad days. You, you start doing things, you are calling yourself the king of this, the prince of this, the, 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 the lord of lords. The, you call, you give yourself titles that are going to put you on under pressure, and then you want now to prove to society that clearly you're the king. And the day you mess up, society will say, ee, ee. and once society starts doubting you, you're already doubting yourself. And before you know it, wah, end of career. So those are the mistakes we do. Join the industry knowing what you want to gain from it. And like Natasha said, there is a lot of hard work. The time you spend away from family, the money you invest in the beginning is a lot. So if you are not ready, don't join so that you come and say, ah, that industry mm -mm, is not worth it because you fail. <laughs> so yeah, that is uh, what I can say, the mistakes we make when we are trying to join, to change careers or something. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. 
Yeah, that thing of king, of prince, of whatever has really hurt you. <laughs> okay. Uh, but it's a good point. I get it. Thank you. Lukman, anything to share? Uh, for me, I think uh, from what I've seen, I get sometimes I get a lot of people asking me also, Lukman, we would like to join the industry uh stuff like that i i don't even know how to phrase those questions because uh because those those things don't I make sense at sorry i have some in my dm now questions to ask you yeah <laughs> yeah yeah but 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 this this is what i've always uh, told people when i when i was starting out i had to buy myself the camera that i started using i had to save up money to buy it i had to pretty much pay for everything that I, I, I use today. So I'm not saying that you have to buy all that stuff yourself. What I'm saying is that for whatever business you want to, for whatever thing you want to do, you have to be willing to, mm. to take a chance on yourself. You know, before you start asking mm. for people to give you a chance, you need to be able to take a chance on yourself because uh, as, mm. as uh, Natasha knows or, or Salvador, when someone is uh, making a movie, and they bring you in as an actor. Even, they, even if they're not paying you uh, the, the amount of money that actors get paid, the, the fact that you are there uh, and they have hired all this equipment and for you just not to show up one day like this, if you've thrown away like 20 million already, you've thrown away so much money and so much time of other people. So by someone asking you, oh, you can take a chance on me and uh, I want to be an actor, uh, you don't even have to pay me. Every time they say that, in my head, I'm thinking, paying you is like not as expensive as you wasting everyone everyone's time. So for you to uh, start, you don't before you start asking people for chances, you need to take a chance on yourself. You need to invest in you and 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 show people that you're worth investing in. You know, and uh, mm. and, and 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 as for what job you do for me what i uh, my, my formula now is that i look at a job and i'm thinking uh if i'm to pick a job now i look at what would i do uh, what would i be doing even if there was if, if i had all the money in the world what would i be doing now so the thing that you'd be doing uh without money the thing that you would do if you had all the money in the world that's mm. the job that you would be doing that's the thing that makes you happy and that's the thing that you you'll do and you'll research and you'll try to improve yourself every every single time but just trying to run into comedy because salvador has made it uh, i think that's a very bad way of choosing careers uh, you need to do the thing that makes you happy you need because work, work is very tedious like we all wish we didn't have to work so uh, you if you're if you're choosing a job you have to find a job that you will be happy doing even on the days that you're not happy and for me, uh, filmmaking, as much as I love it, the times I'm working and uh, me and the client just don't see eye to eye and it's so stressful. And I always wonder if I was not doing this thing that I really love, how, how would my life be? I think I would hate my life so much because mm -hmm. I'm doing the thing that I love and, and I still get stressed. Now, yeah. imagine doing, doing a job you don't like, that, that would be crazy. So... Uh, for me, my advice for people would be to uh, tr try and invest in themselves and, and not to look at people. Uh, I, I'm not saying that Salvador or Natasha or myself were in the final form. We are all still trying to figure things out and we're still trying to push ourselves to where we would want to be. But if you look at Salvador now and you're just entering comedy and you're comparing yourself to him and you're trying to be the next him, you have to look at mm. what he went through. You have to look at what he went through. All the because uh, people usually like when we when we're making movies, people see behind the scene uh, pictures, and they only see the happy moments. They only see moments where we are we are chatting mm. and we are happy. They never we waited for seven hours for electricity to come back, or for we waited for a concert that was next to us to stop playing loud music. They never see all that frustration, so they only see the results. And they're trying to achieve those results without ever wondering what happens uh, during or during the process, the process before what other, the rest of the world sees. When we're doing 16 rounds, we invited people to come and watch, uh, be part of the, the filmmaking uh, behind the scenes. Uh, on the first day, uh, people registered, we got around 300 people. 
but I, I by the end we only had three people that were there at the end and uh, only one guy one one guy like this one guy was uh, doing the thing that he was doing from the beginning so most most people get immediately when they got there and they saw that we spent so many hours before before cameras start rolling they were like yeah this looks boring but from for, but the, the, their, their idea, looking from outside, they thought it was all glamour. And, oh, you're going to go there, hang out with all these uh, beautiful actresses and hang out with all these actors. They didn't realize that it's it's only fun on premiere day when people are looking at their work and they've forgotten all, all about the stress that happens behind the scenes. Yeah. And, and, and that applies to all industries. Every single industry, there's a lot of work that you don't see, a lot of hard work that you never get to see. You only see the the Instagram posts at the end, and 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 people tend to thrive for that. That's what they're they're trying to to achieve. Uh, and when they find out that there's a lot of hard work involved, they get disappointed and they want to quit. Yeah. So I I, I guess people should prepare for uh, when when you want to be a, a top comedian, you need to find out uh -huh. the. The things that the comedian does before he gets to stage, because uh, the stage part must yeah. be, uh, it's, it, I think it's like the equals too, but you have to find the things, what they had to add and subtract and all the work they had to do before they get to that point. And, and most people ignore that. So I think they should That's concentrate true. more wow. on that. Mm. Okay. Thank you very much, Lukman. I've learned quite a bit. I think um, my main point would be be principled. You should have principles as you get into the business and make sure you stick to them. That's what Natasha said. And then Salvador said lack of self-belief can cause you problems because you know you sort of then don't believe in yourself and so you become desperate to take on anything that comes your way. And then Lukman has said you need to work from a place of passion because even <laughs> as you get into the creative industry, there will be bad days and there will be trouble. So you need to make sure that you really, 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 really want to do this thing. Um, I'd like to open up for questions now, but before I do, I see that Natasha has her hand up. So I'm going to invite her to speak. And if you'd like to ask a question, you can raise your hand now, or you can type your question in the chat. I can see a few questions in the chat, so I'll go through those. And Isaac already has his hand up, but for now, let me just invite Natasha to speak. Yeah, and uh, I was just going to add on on the last, uh, uh, point that we are on, I will say that uh, we, 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 I think we say this, uh, Salvador and I, about the money thing, that don't want money and everything. Uh, please don't get it twisted that you don't have to work for money. Yes, you have, because that's the reason why we do this at the end of the day. We want to have money. Mm -hmm. But the one question you should always ask yourself when you decide to work for money, when you look at your work or when you look at your work ethic, you should ask yourself one question. Would you pay you Ooh. for that work? Would you pay you for that effort? So mm. if you cannot pay yourself for that, get out of it. If you look at yourself and and you you're not you don't you can never stand yourself when you're doing something, then get out of it. Don't do it just because you've seen the glamour. I will tell you something. There's no glamour on set at all. There's no point. There's glamour on set. You will stink on set. Yeah, you will look like trash on set. You will mm -hmm. not brush your teeth for full day on because you are on set. You understand? And you and, and there is no one who sells to you. Let me say, if I'm, I'm shooting a movie, I'm not going to tell you I didn't brush my teeth before the movie comes out. I'm going to tell you about this mm -hmm. when the movie is out. You're going to see me on the red carpet with my high heels, my nice dress, looking all glam. And then we're going to introduce the movie. The movie's out there. You like it, you love it. But the thing is to understand the movie just doesn't magically come onto screen. You understand? It is give, it is, it's a lot of work. So, and in that space that you're working, would you pay yourself? That's the only question you should keep asking yourself. Yeah. Mm. Wow. Thank you for that. Would you pay you? That's Heavy, it's a heavy question, um, something to ponder on. Okay, so I'm going to invite questions. Isaac has had his hand up for a while. So I'll invite Bakash. 
Um, if you have a question, you can just raise your hand on the Zoom feature. If you raise it physically, I may not be able to see you. Um, or you can post your questions in the chat. I can see a few questions here in the chat, so I'll go through those, but we can begin with Bakash. Yes, thank you so much, Mali, and uh, to all the panelists. Thank you so much. This is, has been really great. My question and maybe my compliment is, uh, do you think uh, from the discussion we've had, uh, do you think career guidance should be mandatory to all you know, youth and people in the high and uh, learning institutions? Because we see that we are misguided at some point. We, our parents have different expectations, friends, people we look up to. So do you think we should be career guided career-wise so that we take the right approaches at the start? And then, my second question would be, um, you guys have, you know, you've done it. We've appreciated the work over time and the choices you took, I think. And I think, are you enjoying what really the choices you took, the passion? And do you feel that you've really hit the success? Or maybe the, at the point you hit the success, you're already tired and you, you didn't know that you're winning. So. How do you really rate yourself and apprise yourself over time to see that you you keep on the notch and you know keep hitting hard? Yeah, uh, I, I I let me let me start. Um, I will say this: Yes, we need career guidance. It's I think it's it's always there. It's been there even from way back. It's just that it's not noisier. But I think career guidance is very important. You need to know. What it, I, I think sometimes uh, an outside voice can give you uh, a, a confirmed can can confirm your decision. I don't know if I make sense when I say that. Like if you hear, if you don't have, you need to know that. Oh, if I go into this, this is the good and the bad. This is good and bad, good and bad. If you understand that, it makes it much easier for you to know what are your struggles and what you can decide to do. You understand because at the same uh, at the same time we need to understand our, our capacities as human beings to be able to to achieve our goals so it's very good to have career guidance so that you can know which direction you would want to take and um asking about the successes i don't think i've even reached halfway even uh, i wouldn't say quarter away my ladder to my success i am still building my empire so i i I achieve everything that I come with as success, like everything that I have, like everything I have done is success, but to the epitome of my success, not yet there. I am still going ahead because I know uh, five years, what I did five years and what I'm doing now, I'm doing greatly now than I did five years. So I think um, five years uh, in the future, Jakuba Mzibunyo, so, I honestly, I think I'm still heading towards my 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 winning goals. Yeah, we're ready. <laughs> right, uh, maybe let me also uh, chip in a little bit. Uh, the the mm -hmm. the the guy who asked the question talked about the parents' expectations and then his expectations and then society's expectations. That's what I'm saying. We do not have career guidance in Uganda. Eh? We have a decision mm -hmm. made by parents which we follow, and then yeah. later, yeah. we are guided. We, 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 we look at what to do. <laughs> so here's the thing. When it comes to career guidance, they should guide my career. Yeah, Guide me, tell me the things I should do or I shouldn't do. That is guiding. Yeah, What we have is uh, fulfilling our parents' expectations. And then later, we start beating our lives up. One thing we should never do is to rush to achieve fame, to achieve success. Why? Because nobody is too old to dream. There's a 62 year old mm -hmm. guy. We were going to shoot something, he was a director, and he told me, my dream is to, 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 to film a Hollywood, a Hollywood movie. And I was at 62, you are still dreaming. The guy said, you are never too old. You are never too old to wow. dream. As long as what you're doing doesn't make you happy, you will never be happy in your life. What we do most of the time is we want to make our parents happy. Why? Because of society. Our parents feel bougie when they say, aha, my son is a doctor. My son is an engineer. My son does this. But it's very hard for your father to say, ah, he's a musician. He's there. 
there is a comedian. <laughs> you even their tone, the tone at which they used to describe what you do is a little bit reserved. So it's no lo- it's not as confident as when you're a lawyer. So most of the time we do the things we don't love because we want to make our parents happy. And when our parents are happy, the society around us is happy. Everyone will start calling you Tata Doctor, Tata Engineer, Tata this, Tata that. Nobody comes and says Tata Comedian, <laughs> tata, tata, tata Actor. So it is, it, is, it is very hard. So what we should do is to encourage. <laughs> it, this is that now it's going to start with me because I don't think my parents will have it, will understand what it means to to for somebody to do something they love. Yeah, we are doing something because we have to, not because we love mm-hmm. to do it. Because when you do something you love, you do it effortlessly. People look at you. That's why you find a guy. You find me at a, at a wedding, and then somebody just says, "Hey, Salvador, hey." Go, go and talk, talk. Because they, they see you doing it effortlessly. So they think there's no time you put in your art. They just look at you and they say, get over, say, say. Just because when they look at you doing, when you're on stage, you look calm, you look easy, you look free. Not knowing that uh, you, you're happy, you're passionate about what you're doing. But behind that happiness, there's a lot of things that you've added. Like, like uh, Lukman said, most people today, they look at the equals the success. They only see the success. They have not seen the pain, the hard work, the passion, the free gigs, the cheating, the what. These are the things that have added to that equals success. So nobody looks at the other side of the equation. They only look at the success side of the equation. So for me, I think it is, it is very, very important. When you talk about career guidance, first have a career that you love. They look for guidance from the people who are well versed in that career of yours. Like, it's very hard for me to go and ask my dad, hey, by the way, this comedy thing, I want you to do ABCD because they don't understand. But if I sat down with Pablo, I sat down with Abe Muchivi, I sat down with, uh, with Patrick Mujuka, even Katolo Wama, and I asked them, I want you to do this in the comedy industry. They will have the best guidance uh, to give me in that field. So when we talk about career guidance, yeah, it can career guidance can't be taught in school. It can't be on the on the on the on the curriculum. You can't have it on the curriculum that tomorrow we are going to start the career guidance. Then you sit and then they start saying, in your career, start doing everything. No. To be guided in your career, you must first of all have a career and you must love it. And then you look for the relevant people who are going to guide you to fulfill your potential. So career guidance, unfortunately, in Uganda is a broad word. Yeah? That's why you find in school there's a careers teacher, overhead of what, careers master. Hmm? How, is the, how is the careers master going to help me in mm. the field of comedy? Yeah, these are the things. They only mm. guide you when you're choosing, for example, the school I want to go to in all level or the university I want. That's when they can guide you. Makerede, that's what they are well versed in. But career, career wise, yeah, something you love, something you want to take on, something mm-hmm. you feel you're going to do effortlessly you need to get people in that field to guide you, not just any random person. Like if I wanted to start acting, I would go to Natasha and I ask her about, I will not go to school for that. I will go to Natasha because she has experience. She tell me the do's, the don'ts. And it's up to me now to decide whether to partake of, of whatever uh, uh, guidance she has given me or not. So when it comes yeah. to career guidance, let's first of all know what we love because it's from what you love that you're going to push and you're going to make it successful. And then let's look for those people who are going to guide us in our career, people who have experience <laughs> in that very career. Successful people who have experience in that same career. Like, there's no way I can go to MC Kapali and I ask him for guidance in comedy. You need successful people in that area to guide you. <laughs> He's going to create a world to, <laughs> to guide you in that career. Uh, so yeah, I think uh, that is what I can contribute. Uh, good thing, Salvador. MC Kapali doesn't have a phone, so he won't be saying this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, guys, <laughs> that has been so helpful, Salvador. Thank you. Um, yeah, get join the career and then seek guidance from people that are already in it. Um, okay, before we continue, I would just like to say a big, big thank you to Natasha. She has to run. So she's going to hop off this 
call, but I just wanted to say thank you so much for your time, for your wisdom, for sharing with us and for taking part today and for coming really, really on time. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yeah, I, I would like to say, because I'm leaving, I would just like to say, if you're really thinking of entering this uh, creative industry, you're very welcome come with all your shields and everything come to work uh, let's build the industry together i am so so glad i had this panel with the salvador and lukman you guys are great i've worked with all of them by the way they're the best people to work with on set very funny very amazing and uh, i I'm, I'm going off and they'll give you more so have a lovely day thank you thank you bye enjoy your day bye all right, so thank you, Look, um, Salvador, for that thought. It was very, not the thought, for that advice. I think it, I'm sure it has helped someone here. Um, someone is saying, Samuel is saying, what you think is you should embrace the idea of mentorship programs. I think that's a good idea. Maybe Lukman and Salvador can start something for like mentorship in film and comedy and whatever, I don't know. Anyway, but I think mentorship programs is a good idea. Um, okay, let's go through some of the questions. Maybe I should start from the top. So there's a question here directed to Lukman. Um, is there a space where one can just hang around you or the people you work with in order to just learn more and new skills on top of what I already know? So I guess because you know, you've talked about putting yourself out there and finding people that you can speak to, you can follow, that you can learn from. Um, someone is asking, like, is there a particular space, like maybe there are mentorship programs that we don't know about, or maybe you have like a training program that you do, or there's like, school, like generally, is there a space that one can hang around? Yeah, we, we try to do that uh, on the project we just finished, 10 rounds. But people say that they want to, but <laughs> when they get there and they, they find out that it's not what they were actually, what they thought it was, they get disappointed and they almost, you know, they get that face as if, as if, as if we're bali imba. You know, they come to the, they, they get to the, to the thing and they're like, you didn't tell us that it was this difficult, you know. Uh, mm. I had people coming to the, uh, we, we had this workshop and I told you 300 people registered, but like 15 showed up and then in the end we only had like three left and only one was active. The rest were just there chilling. So uh, the, the uh, filmmaking, we tend to have a very, uh, a very stressful uh, environment, a very stressful environment. Uh, and, and most people, most people are just not built for that level of stress uh, where we are almost always fighting. <laughs> we are always fighting until, until the work is finished. That's when we become friends again, but it's like, uh, a, a, a constant battle and, and most people can't can't deal with that and uh, uh, I, I've tried to put up those things I, I, I'll still try I'll try I'll, I'll try to push and have uh, those mentorship uh, things but I, I always feel like the people that tend to come to those things are the ones that gen that don't don't genuinely want them they are like just there because mm -hmm. I don't, know, I don't know what they expect. To be honest, I don't. I never know what they want. I, yeah, I never know what they really mm. want. I, I think they just want to go to a to an industry where you just snap your fingers and things happen. Uh, yeah. And it's never like that. It's really never like that. For me, every time I look at any industry, it can be a YouTube uh, vlogger, it can be a makeup artist, anyone that's doing something and they're at the top of uh, top of their game, I know for sure that if I watched them work, I would get scared because they must be doing something that's uh, something different. I, I know for yeah, sure right now, crazy. right now Mayweather yeah. is probably working out. He's probably running, you know, uh, right <laughs> now. I, I, he must be, you know. Any Think of anyone that's doing, uh, that's at the top of their game, they're practicing they're doing something now that uh, all these other people in the industry are not doing so uh when, yeah. when, when someone asks it seems to be breaking is it? yeah he's left off.
Um, and something happened. Okay. Um, he has left these spaces. Is he back? Um, and people, everyone wants the end result, <laughs> but not the work that goes into it. Seems to be the thing. Let me go into another question, which I can ask Salvador and then Salvador. And oh, he's back. Okay. We can, he's back, he's back, he's back. Okay, he's back. I was going to go into another question, but maybe you can just wind up actually, Lukman, and then I'll move into the next question. Yeah, I've, I've forgotten the question. <laughs> <laughs> we had started with their programs, mentorship spaces or programs that people can take one. And then you oh, yeah. had talked to us, but yeah. Yeah, but but I, I think also uh, because now uh, because of COVID, uh, a lot of things have changed. So I don't I don't know going forward how that will happen, but um, I am happy to share. You know, I'm happy to share uh, the the little knowledge that I have. <laughs> I'm happy to share with people. Yeah. Yeah. So let's let's okay. hope that something changes so that we can we can have those things happening again. Yeah, that's right. I have a random thought, Lukman. I don't know if maybe that's something that you've tried before, but I have experienced it before dealing with people is that I think it's that thing you're saying many times someone wants the end result, but then when they see the work that goes into it, they're no longer interested. I think that one of the things that you could do is maybe get people to actually commit where you actually detail what's going to happen in the mentorship program and what you require of them. And they have to agree and say, actually, okay, I think I'm ready for this commitment. Or, hey, it's this complicated. I don't want to so sort of come in when they've signed a commitment. But also I noticed, I once heard someone was speaking about a, men, a business training program they had started and the results they were getting out of it were very little. Like they would start with like a hundred people and by the end of it, there are five people. And so they had to introduce a payment to it because there's something about people and money. Like the moment you put your money in the thing, all of a sudden you're so interested. So it doesn't have to be a lot, but like even a small commitment fee of like 20K, 50K, because it's like, man, if I really paid for this thing, then I have to take it seriously and actually commit. So that could, that's just a thought in terms of, if it's not something that you've done before, it may help. Mm. I think uh, yeah. the, the, I the, the, the fun... wanting to charge people and if you're doing good, do good completely, but human beings can be complicated. <laughs> the thing about Sorry, filmmaking, to... yeah, the thing about filmmaking and, and why it's so difficult for me to like detail what will happen. Filmmaking is uh, mm. uh, like, it's almost like performing magic. There's a lot of tricks and all these things that happen. So sometimes we go into a project and we have no idea what we'll have to do. Like you, you're supposed to be shooting mm. something here. They, they chase you away from there because security or something. And now you have to improvise and come up with ways and methods of how to make this thing happen. So on, on, on the spot, you have to come up with ideas. Like okay, how do we pull this off? How do we do this? And you have to solve these problems. And these problems might require some sort of like physical strength where you have to like literally carry things around and uh, create an impression of something that's not yet, that's not there. Or it, sometimes it takes a lot of things like, uh, it's so, so big, uh, for that reason, it becomes extremely difficult to have a complete mm -hmm. breakdown of exactly what will happen, you know? And I yeah. guess that's why most people, uh, they get there and they're like, okay, so we, we were told that this is going to, there's going to be some filming done here. And when they get there, they find out that before the filming happens, there's like five hours of just preparing and just looking around confused and just looking for where to film. And, and that t tends to turn people off. They tend to be like, okay, yeah, this is not, nice. this is not what I expected. And, and, and yeah. People, people at that point walk away. And in my head, I'm thinking, yeah, okay, that's good for you then. Fair enough, thank you. Um, someone else has raised their hand, so I'll invite the person, uh, Blaze. I hope that's how they say your name. I'll ask Blaze to speak, then I'll read another question from the chat section. Uh, thank you so much, Marley. I hope I'm being heard loud and clear. Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Um, thank you so much for uh, the, the, the discussion. 
well i joined this discussion mainly because i wanted to to listen in from uh from lukman um i've been uh a big fan of his work and uh, been following up on his projects on his YouTube. But um, there is, there is, there is uh, something that uh, Salvador um, talked about, approaching people in the industry with uh, the experience to guide you. Um, I'm going to tell you that uh, I, like, I personally know a couple of friends that uh, we share with the same passion of uh, photography, videography, and all that, and uh, probably they want to they want to uh, move or like get to a different level than they are and stuff like that. But then they lack this experience from the people that are actually doing things because when you look at um, like uh, a film, a short film that Lukeman has made, and you like you like its quality alone is way. Uh, uh, above what we are used to seeing. Now, um, we, we, we go a step ahead and look at other uh, filmmakers on YouTube and how they do their work and stuff like that. But you realize that still, they do not give you the real life experience. You know, you may have all this knowledge, how to work with the cameras, how to work with the softwares and stuff like that, but you do not know the exact experience that uh, a filmmaker goes through to put up probably a short film or even an advert of like 30 seconds and stuff like that. So that experience is what uh, we are lacking. And uh, that is why I was emphasizing so much. If you can check, if you can check in, in the charts, I was emphasizing so much on those um, possibilities of the mentorship programs, because personally I've always wanted to uh, be mentored by uh, Lukeman. You know, uh, at some point, I even DM'd him on his tweet. I don't know if he still uses it. You know, I've followed up his work on um, okay. on, on, so you, uh, on, on YouTube your, and all that. So, could you sum up your question? Could you sum yes. up your question okay. to like a um, In piece? summary, in mm. yes, in summary, uh, Lukeman has said he has had a few of these uh, uh, call like calls for 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 that are interested in the work. Where can someone find uh, such uh, information, given that you're going to work on a project and probably you need people that are interested in what you're doing to come and uh, get the experience? Where do they actually get this information? Thank you. Yeah, I always have this information on my uh, social medias, uh, like Instagram and Facebook. Uh, yeah. So when when when, uh, when I have something happening, I always post on that stuff. I, it's hard for me to reach out to people individually because yeah. uh, there tend to there tend, tends to be a couple of people, and I sometimes can't keep up with everyone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So maybe that's your answer. You just find him on his social media platforms, which I believe are Lukman Ali all across, right? Yeah. 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 Okay, so we'll maybe address this question to Salvador can take it on before he, I think he also has to go and then Lukman can do it. I think this might be our last question because time is also running out. Um, the question says, I'm Kay Michelle, very passionate about events management. So passionate that my blood boils excitedly at the sound of the word event. Um, okay, so she's had experience. She's done creation for events. She's worked with a company before she's learned a lot of things. So she's asking how does she turn this passion into her ultimate career, especially at this time. So basically, how do you move from passion into career? Like in, a, in terms of a practical step, like maybe what's the first thing that she could do so that, yeah, I'm so excited and passionate about this thing. Uh -huh. How do I make it a career? Uh, the first, you see there's, there's, there's events manager, is events promoter, there is events uh, planner. So I don't know when the, she says she's a, an event. What are you in, uh, specifically? Because uh, events manager, I don't know how whether you can call that. Uh, I don't know how I can best answer because you already have the passion, you already have the 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 the, the zeal. Yeah, uh, you just need now to profile yourself, to brand yourself as a, a very good events planner or event manager yeah by by you know boosting your social media 
Yeah, that is now creating a brand. If you don't have the equipment that will help you sell your brand, you can, every opportunity you get to create an event, you need to be at the forefront, you understand? People have to talk about you. Word of mouth is the best uh, advertising uh, medium here in Uganda. People recommend uh, people who have done well for them. So if you're passionate about this thing, also be equally passionate about creating awareness of your, uh, of your, of your capabilities. Because you may have the passion and you may have even the equipment, but you're there sitting, waiting for opportunities to come. Any opportunity you get, make sure you are showcasing yourself on the screens on the, on the event. Your logo is there. You, 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 you're talking about yourself. The, 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 let the Mugole or, or whoever, your client, talk about you. Thank you. Huh? Like people should talk about you so that the, the interest is, is, is there. You understand? Uh, events management is a very, 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 very wide thing because in an event, there is the decorator, there is the sound person, there is the uh, videography, there, is, there are so many things that are involved. So if you are an events manager, you need to have, first of all, access, especially if you don't have the equipment, you need to have access to all these people to give you cheaper options. Like for example, I am, I am an events planner. So when somebody tells me, Salvador, my budget is 20 million, I want you to plan for me my wedding. I will know whom I'm going, to, I'm going to get the chairs from, the person I'm going to get the tent, just in case it's an outdoor, the person I'm going to get the sound from, the person I'm going to get the lighting from, and, and at the end of the day, the credit will all come down to me. Yeah, Salvador events, over what events? That are, yet you have used other events, your companies, to put together one final that is going to sell you out. So you need to, first of all, have a reputation, have a, a relationship with all those event suppliers, uh, the chairs, the tents, the da, 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 da. Then now you sell your profile. Every event you do, you say events planner, make sure you, 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 you have the, 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 your title there, events manager of this thing. Because what people do is these different events companies you bring together also want to showcase their what? Their staff. So there's a lot of katogo when it comes to what, what goes on the screen. You find this one who say, I supply the chairs, I supply the sound. I supply. Yet you, they are under you. You understand? So your name mm -hmm. is, is, is engulfed in, in their promotion. But if you're the events manager, you pay this service provider, you tell them at the end of the day, my logo has to appear. So it's mostly about branding yourself and positioning yourself. Because now that you have the passion and you have the skill to do it, you need to create the relationships and brand yourself. Because that is the only way you're going to turn it into a long-time career. Whereby they say, pink coconut, hey, is the one who does this. I, I, I candy, oh, shit. yet I candy hires fan on record. <laughs> you understand? Hires uh, something to do the different different kinds. Of. Yet fan on record is also fan on events is also an events company of its own. But it's eye candy that they will showcase because she's the overall event manager. Wow, I think that was very helpful. Thank you, Salvador. I think I should also use this opportunity to say thank you because you'd like to jump off the call, right? Or are you going to stay for extra five minutes? Okay, um, so jumping. thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you for sharing your wisdom and your humor and your stories. It has been very helpful and very practical. Um, yeah, so on behalf of the people, I would like to say thank you. Have a good day and really you. your afternoon, really. The morning is over. Yeah. You too, All right, Kali. All right, guys, so we only have Lukman left. I see there are two people that have questions specifically directed to Lukman. Um, so I'm going to ask Ambrose to unmute himself and you have to speak in under a minute because we have very little time left and I'm going to have to cut you off if it takes longer than a minute. So gather your thoughts, organize your question and make it one clear, quick question. And then I'll read a question here from Debbie Chiravo. I think we can start with Debbie's question because it's quite easy. And then I'll ask um, Ambrose to unmute and Lukman could do it in one go. Debbie is just asking, are there YouTube channels that you would recommend for one to get wisdom on top of what they already know in terms of videography and film production? So YouTube channels that talk about 
videography and film production, basically the kind of work that you're into. Um, then I'll ask Ambrose to unmute and ask his question, and then you can answer at once. And if there's time, we'll take another um, question. If there's time, close. Okay, thank you so much, Madam Moderator. You're welcome. My name is Mali. Mali, well, uh, my name is Ambrose Ingovi. And like I introduced you in the very beginning, I am a student at Makere University and I take a bachelor's degree in drama. Um, I am an aspiring writer specifically for the plays and the script, screenplays. Um, this goes to Luke Manali. Luke Manali, if you can remember very well, um, I was in the Data Fest 2021 at Motive and I'm a friend to Chirunji Brendalin. Uh, that MC and I met you, we met you together with Brendalyn. I am a dreamer lookman. And like I said, I'm a screen writer. I want to write the next Wakanda to be shot in Africa. And that should be in Uganda. And you know what? I want you to shoot this movie, Lukman. So I'm just wondering what it shall take. Thank you so much. Oh, wow. Hey, shoot your shoot. That's what they call it. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think it's pretty like uh, so many people that have this kind of uh, dream. And I, uh, I guess I also had the same kind of dream before I started producing films myself. Uh, the, 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 the reason that that film, uh, you, the, that, that film of Wakanda has just been made now uh, yet the comic book has existed for a long time. There's, there's a reason. And once you know those reasons, I think then you're ready to make movies because um, movies are not necessarily only about you having a good story or you having the will or you having, or you having the passion or you want, wanting to do the stuff. There's also a lot of things that need to be in place. Like there's so much stuff that has to be aligned together for you to be able to do a production. Now, the reason I write my own mo movies is because I know this uh, and I, uh, because I know this, I can easily write things that I know I'll definitely be able to pull off. But uh, most of the people that write, they tend to write things, uh, 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 things like they see in Hollywood, uh, sometimes forgetting that the technical uh, work required to make these things a reality is almost unachievable with the equipment wow. we have. So I am I'm not trying to uh, shit on your dream. You can uh, dream, make a movie on Mars, that's fine. But you have to think about the technical uh, requirements, like what does it take to create this world that you're trying to, sh to sh uh, you're trying to, uh, create what the, what's required uh, camera wise crew wise special effects wise all these things if you if you decided to, to do to make this movie today and you put it out there will it be respected will people watch it and think yeah you know what this is a this is the uh, the, the Wakanda version of Uganda and we would we would like to watch this in South Korea you know uh, or is it going to be another Wakaliwood thing where people will share it online? Yes, it will get a million views, but they will be watching it and laughing at us instead of laughing with us. Uh, so there's a lot of things you need to think about. I, 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 I'm not making uh, these cheap films of uh, the blind date and all these cool films that happen in one location. It's not necessarily because that's what I. That's that's the ultimate goal. I make that because at, at the moment, that's what I can achieve. And I, I like dreaming big, but I also like to be able to fulfill the dream. So I tend to dream big and then also have a medium dream that I can achieve for now as I wait for the big one, uh, for the technology to catch up or for whatever other thousands of reasons that movies are not made to catch up. So, so that, that's why. I. Uh, uh, the, the movie that you're writing, the, the, uh, I guess you can give it a try, but the moment you mentioned Wakanda and <laughs> Marvel, Marvel level stuff, I, in my head, I'm thinking, okay, uh, good luck to that. Uh, no, I'm not saying it's not possible, but uh, I think when you, watch, uh, uh, when you watch movies, when they end, you shouldn't walk out of the cinema. You should stay and watch how many people are involved in this film and also the budget of that film. So 
when you put those together, how many people are involved in this film and how much money do these people have? They hired all these people and all these people put a lot of effort in this job and it came out like that. So now put that in Uganda. How many people do we have that are skilled like this? Do we even have enough? Like when you watch the credits of that movie, the entire film industry of Uganda, even if we are put, to put our names, they would not take up that much room. So there's a the couple of things you need to look at before, before you start uh, having, uh, I'm not saying you shouldn't dream, please go ahead. But I feel like we're not yet there. Uh, and I am the kind of, I'm the guy that wants to push boundaries, but I'm telling you, I think we, we are not yet there, at least for, for the next couple of years, maybe. I don't know if that answers your question. I'm probably talking to myself right now because I don't see Yeah, any. yeah. No, I, like, I, I, I like think that. it does. Sorry. I think his question has been answered. He's saying thank you in the chat. So thank you oh, for okay. that. Um, there was a question also about YouTube channels for someone who wants to learn about videography and film. Uh, there's a there's a YouTube channel where I I think I've learned the most. It's called YouTube. Uh, it's called uh, Film Courage. Uh, so this YouTube channel uh, doesn't it, yeah it doesn't teach you how to make movies. Yeah, it's, uh, exactly like that. It doesn't. They're not showing you tutorials of how to shoot. They're not showing. They're interviewing filmmakers and they're asking them for like what uh, what do they look at like three things they look at before making a film stuff like that so it kind of helps you check mm. yourself yeah stuff like that so i watch interviews yeah. of like all these filmmakers and you learn from what they're saying and not, not necessarily having to learn how they shoot or how they do this because those technical things are easy you eventually learn them from experience but the hardest things are mm. reasons you know reasons why yeah Hey, these people move quickly. There's even a link to Film Courage. There you go, Debbie. Your question has been yeah. answered over and above. So you can click the link and shall take you to that. Um, mm. Wow, it's one o'clock on the dot. So for the people whose questions have not been answered, I am truly, truly sorry. Time is upon us, but thank you so, so much for joining us. Um, before we close, there is another poll that is going to pop up on your screen shortly. Um, so I'd like to ask that they just pop up that poll on the screen. We just do it one minute and then I will make the official close. Um, here we just want to understand how we can better um, serve you, make the next the future sessions better. So just tell us your career status. Are you a student? Are you a business owner? Are you employed, self-employed? What if I'm all the above, Bakash <laughs> Um, which career sectors of the economy are you in? Legal, business and finance, health sciences, creative art and design. I think we did that. Rate this session. Are you extremely dissatisfied? Dissatisfied? I hope not. Ordinary satisfied, fairly satisfied, extremely satisfied. Um, okay. That's it. Oh, there are three questions. The first one had five, this one had three questions. So I think all the questions have been answered. Thank you very much. So I'd like to say a big thank you to Lukman Ali. Thank you so much for joining us, for joining the conversation and for staying with us all the way to the end. Um, thank you to Natasha and to Salvador in their absence. They also came and they shared with us some good knowledge and some good wisdom. And thank you to everyone that made it. We were quite a number of people during the call. I kept seeing people jump in and out, in and out. So thank you to every single person that made it for this session, those of you that interacted with us and engaged in the chat section, asked questions and all of that, you make it more exciting and more meaningful. So thank you for taking part and for engaging with us. And of course, a big thank you to Bakash Media Foundation for putting this whole thing together, for sharing with us all these ideas, for coming up with all these great topics and that is going to keep coming every single week. So for those of you that are on this call, we'll have this session and again next week same time thursday 11 to 1 we'll have different people online we will talk about something different last week we talked about business and we had humphrey navimania we had dr maggie chibozi and we had um arinaito Jendo. so this week we've had um lukman ali patrick salvador and natasha sinayovie so it's been very good um next week aha uh -huh, this is the topic for next week 
um, dealing with financial uncertainties amidst a crisis. So if you feel like you might be struggling a little bit with issues to do with finances, or there are things you want to understand, you want to get better at, or just start dealing with your finances, just have a better understanding, we are going to have a dope and interesting panel. I have a suspicion of who some of these people might be, but I won't say anything until it's confirmed, but we're going to have people who definitely have made it in the issue of finances, the area of finances, they're doing well. Um, yeah, we have a really good lineup of panelists currently. A few yet to be confirmed, but it's going to be good. So join us next Thursday, 11 a.m., same time. Um, oh, you can even register. The link for registration is out. So you can even register, register as early as now. If you'd like to catch this session, the full session, it will be available on YouTube. Just search the Bakash Media Foundation page and you will be able to find it. It's Bakash Media UG, I think, on YouTube. They will share the link shortly. Find you can find this Mali, session. Mali, their last week's session. Mali. Oh, yes. Mali. Yes. I think sorry. Lukman yes. should, should also inform Lukman to subscribe and like our pages. <laughs> if it's that okay. Yes. I think so, Mr. Lukman. The CEO has requested that you like our YouTube page, subscribe, Bakash Media, and watch your video also. No problem. No problem. I, I'll, I'll send you my mobile money number. <laughs> I like it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully, Michelle is saying hopefully we could do live conferences if the president opens up this country. I think that would be a good idea. The people have spoken. I guess Bakash Media has had. They shall see what they can do about it and how they can help it. Um, I think that would be a good idea because here everyone's video is off. I'm just using faith and hoping that I'm speaking to people that are there. So funny. Anyway, so yeah, thank you guys so much for taking part. This is the link to sign up for next week's um, session. Why wait for next week when you can <laughs> register now? So you can just click that link and it will lead you to the registration platform and you can register yourself to attend next week's session. Thank you guys so much for coming. I'm going to just keep talking for about a minute so that in case anyone's clicking on the link, they can click the link because I think when I stopped talking, I would have wound up and then the session would be over. Um, and Bakash is also sharing something on the screen. So this is such an incredible job, guys. Like you have to just keep talking and talking and talking and talking forever and ever. And then, wow. Yeah, I can see my picture on the screen. I have been your moderator. My name is Mali Keisha Maza. Last week, people struggled to pronounce my name. I got like four new names. So I think this week, people refrain from saying my name. I think it's jam. But thank you so much for taking part in this session. We're just going to have some background music. Um, so that in case you'd like to click this link and register, you can click on the link and register for next week's session. Since you've seen what the session is about, you've seen the topic, we shall unveil who our moderators, or I will be the moderator, who our panelists are um, next week. We will be learning about financials. So we'll give it like two minutes and then I will come back and watch. You are so welcome. Thank you for joining us today. You guys can be sharing in the meantime some of the things that you've really learned today. What has stood out for you today? What's something that you think you can start doing from what you've learned? I like doing these during sessions because it's easy to... Something happened. Oh, because it's easy to come here and learn and say, whoa, it's been great. And then you go back and do absolutely nothing about it. And really the point of us doing these sessions is we want you to learn and to advance and to get better and move forward in life. So just share what's something that you can practically do today as a result of what you've learned for the remaining people on the call. Bridget says, thank you, Bakash Media. Thank you, Marley, for the proper hosting. I like the word proper. You're welcome. Um, whatever I do, I should give it 100%. Yep, that's right, Justine. Um, awesome. Do, 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 do. Um, Carol says, oh, I read that already. I saw something else. 
Michelle says, thank you so much. These discussions are so educative. Um, Samuel says, thank you, Lukman Ali and other panelists and the team and Bakash. See you next time. Yes, we're looking forward to seeing you again next Thursday. Same place, same time. Um, thank you for all the wonderful and the awesome knowledge. There's David Bravo, um, who has received very good practical information. Um, let's see. Alrighty. I'll take like two more responses. What are some of the things, that, what has stood out for you today? What have you learned from the session? What is something that you're excited to start trying out with the knowledge that you've learned? Um, yeah, mine is to really just in everything that I'm pursuing, find someone that I can take guidance from, someone who has been there for a while and they know the things. Um, and learn from them. That's what my main take home is really today and the thing that I'm going to look out for. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you guys for joining us. Prakash Media has an explanation of what this series is about. Um, we provide change makers, people like you and me, with a space platform to tell their story about the incredible work that they do change society so that kind of like the panelists that we've had and all of that um it's part of the experimental learning that we are infusing at Pakash Media in the country's education system to inspire innovate and create problem solvers so Pakash Media is aiming to inspire innovate and create problem solvers they need more problem solvers um if Pakash could just stand down the volume a little bit because I'm like shouting my voice is tired thank you <laughs> um Michelle learned that there's more to great results. There's a lot of work to put into it. I think that's a big thing in the creative industry. I've worked with so many people. I used to work on radio a while ago. And as I was doing, you know, training and working on radio and helping to train people, like usually by the second day, people have quit because they're like, ah, this is so complicated. Like you hear the person on radio and it sounds cool and funky and you want to do it. Then when you realize the work that goes into it, all of a sudden you're like, ah, no, never mind. And yet, yeah, for everything that you do in life, really, there's a lot of work put into it. So that's what Michelle has learned today. Thank you so much. Um, it's 1.10. So I think we can now prepare ourselves to close. I am ready to close. So I'd like to ask Bakash or someone from Bakash Foundation if they have something they'd like to say in final remarks. If not, then I shall close. If they have something, I'll let them say something and then we shall close. Before that, Mark Obwell says, thank you for this fruitful session. It's given you a lot to base on as a creative to always push on and put in effort and time into what you do and you say thank 